The most important document of our time for commitment, for change of mind and heart, begins by reaffirming and recycling the canticle of St. Francis in these words. Praise be to you, my Lord, through our sister Mother Earth, who sustains and governs us and produces various fruit with coloured flowers and herbs. It's a beautiful act of spiritual defiance when churches and community groups are able to plant and to tend even a small orchard of fruit trees. But it's also witness, it's mission, it's encouragement. A tree, though, needs care if the fruit is to be enjoyed. It's when we come to love these trees and appreciate them that the sheer brutality of Jeremiah's enemies sinks in. Let us destroy the tree with their fruit. And we know this evil intent is not limited to horticulture. It's great to shift the blame, to trash the tree, to hope that those in need of the fruit then will lose the plot. I'm grateful to have witnessed an interview on GB News with the polite and prayerful protesters from No Faith in Fossil Fuels. We heard the contention that people were cold and poor because of the wildly inadequate green policies rather than that this was true because of the wholesale neglect of retrofitting, insulation and more. These reflections are presented for, for you, for a movement fragile and in need of care but with fruit to bear which can rightly nourish both our own faith and hope and joy and those of others. We're not the only tree but we're a true part of the harvest. For some, this will be straightforward. They may have the legacy of a long career measured in conventional secular terms. They've evaded the axes of trivia, malice or outrageous fortune. Perhaps they have prayerfully acknowledged the grace of their survival. Perhaps not. For others, their fruit may be the quiet concern they show for their neighbours, and the faithfulness which they add their heart to the prayers of the local church week by week, or whenever they turn up. The most delightful orchards bear a variety of fruit, and trees do have different branches. But the defiant faithfulness, which for a while at least sustained Jeremiah, is based on the conviction that messengers of justice have value in God's eyes whether or not the best of ourselves has yet to come to light, whether or not they achieve their potential in fruitfulness, whether or not we are taken notice of, whether or not we are denied the chance to share what would help those who won't be told, whether or not, as was also a concern for Jesus, whether or not the time has come to go public with what we're really about. And I hope churches are about reality, rather than fantasy. A while ago I made a wee film on the parable of the not yet fruitful fig tree. Was that tree waiting for the right time? Were they holding out for more fertiliser? But, but that parable also contains a very real ultimatum. If that's what you're here for, then get on with it. These video reflections may indeed sometimes be preaching to the converted, yet precisely because those of us who are even the slightest bit converted to the integration of Christian faith and care for creation will need sustaining and do need to build our resilience. So if you're even slightly aware that to take seriously the teaching of God in Christ incarnate in the earth is and always has been integral to Christian faith. And, and if you've noted how Jesus says, look at the flowers and the birds and suspected that this was an invitation made by Jesus because he was in constant contact with nature and filled with affection and awe. If that's you, then welcome back. And if not, then welcome anyway. 
Seek out and receive what gets and keeps you going in Christ's name, in God's name, welcome and enjoy. Amen. We are where we are as a planet because it is possible not only to destroy the glorious habitats that really are trees and forests with their, their fruit and their myriad creatures, giving a home to the birds of the heavens, but whilst lawfully engaging in such sinful destruction, we are allowed to appear wise and public-spirited or manly in so doing. Prophet takes an axe to prophet. Not just in poetry, but in reality. Destroy a tree, especially a mature one, and you snap the gloriously diverse chain of dependence they are part of. The teaching of Jesus about the welcome for the child completes that theme of care. To nourish and refresh even, even the least significant bearers of warnings made in love. For God's own self stands with them. Jesus elucidates the complex nature of leadership in communities, including that community who is God. When Jesus says, whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. The integrity of small kindnesses and acts of justice reaches beyond the immediate gesture to be visible from God's throne. And yes, in our voting with every passing election, and in solidarity with other communities, we are part of the larger currents of history. Yet to neglect the immediate responses to the small situations we live through day by day means the world loses out. These ancient trees are protected. It's recognised that even too much footfall on the ground above their roots could do harm. But alongside the very real aspects of self-sacrifice I have seen in activists for nature and for climate justice, those who may not be formerly leaders, the, the old and the young alike, also need care. Not to burn out, not to lose heart, not to imagine you are the only ones, even if that heavy burden has fallen upon you of being the first one to speak the truth or speak it sufficiently clearly to rustle a few feathers. Not to do the job for them of those who seek to uproot your tree under the pressure of the cult of busyness and indispensability, which is a close cousin of the ideologies which are killing the earth. It's been said by secular environmental campaigners and with some justice that to concentrate on your own personal carbon footprint enables us to be distracted from the responsibility of governments and fossil fuel corporations to make their big moves towards a just transition to a low carbon economy and a better and less harmful life for all. And yet the spiritual reinforcement of doing the right thing in daily life does bear fruit in our own resilience, in the encouragement of our family and neighbours and church and more in responsible public activism too, which flows from the habits of our lives. Yes, I sometimes travel in Europe, where the biggest trains run on clean electricity or even on hydrogen. And to the extent that my work is prophetic, I know that just to hop on a plane for these engagements would be to take an axe to my own roots. Luckily, I have the support of my church's environmental policy. For travel undertaken within Europe, the default option should now be to travel by train. Now, we all live in, with some level of hypocrisy, but we pray, as in Psalm 19, we pray that this will not claim dominion over us. We can act sacrificially, but even then, not complacently. Our martyrdom even our quota for productively irritating others has limits. And whatever our position in our communities, the servant leader needs support. As a movement of truth-telling and of mutual encouragement, we've been called in Eco Congregation Scotland a combination of Jeremiah, prophet of gloom, and Barnabas, the encourager. 
Likewise, simply we pray, knowing that by the grace of God, this is part of God's work of healing. A church which pursues an eco-congregation award has not saved the planet, but they will have brought hope. They will have brought the right sort of pride and usually joy into their communities, often along with juicy, tasty fruit, vegetables and wildlife too. But to attend to those planetary axemen, it's a truth universally acknowledged that big oil sees it as a good investment with budgets astronomically in excess of a medium-sized church denomination to sponsor the twisting and the undermining of truth about this crisis. Whether it's in the claim that by using their petrol you're driving carbon neutral, and that's a genuine instance which was dealt with by the Advertising Standards Agency, or by green trumpeting the comparatively mingy percentages that these mega corporations have invested in renewables whilst energetically keeping the oil flowing. And also sometimes by encouraging those who have gained standing in another field to sell their souls and skills pulling academic rank. Now, if this trend were limited to misinformation, that would be bad enough. It certainly speaks in a way quite analogous to racism to deeply ingrained attitudes which are lurking in every consciousness in the global north. How is it we kick back against any response to the crisis of nature and climate far more than to the causes of the crisis in the first place? Elsewhere, like Jeremiah himself, scientists, campaigners are suffering death threats and even actual murder. But for us and in the culture of churches, the axe might fall when we're labelled woke or, or tree huggers. Also sometimes just to shift the green things further down the agenda of presbyteries, synods and assemblies so that the proper business of church, whatever that may be, takes exclusive priority. Of course, thank God, sometimes the opposite does happen. It can happen with you and the fruits the fruits will feed God's world, God's people. I know some will have winced at that opening poetry about Mother Earth. Take it easy. This is in praise of God with nature, not in competition. That old insult, pagan, which was kept in reserve to deal with anyone who showed a worrying tendency to love or respect God's creatures, that has matured. By the grace of God, outside churches at least, pagan just sounds cool and thank God also respectable interfaith groups welcome and learn from real and committed pagans as we would from other faith groups, as God willing, they can from us. Just as for Global North folk, when we hear from indigenous or downtrodden folk, whether it's Christian or otherwise, it is sufficient to learn from them. We don't have to be them. Rather, learning from them, like those Christ welcomed, we discover whom it is we are called to be. That's fruitful. When we discover to our delight that those who are not against us are for us and for our world. A young tree may be fruitful, but ancient trees are habitats. They are stores of carbon. They are carers for life in many and various ways. Could we see our historic churches as trees. Gnarled, distorted, doing work which has yet to be valued, but vital in ways beyond what we can see to God's green web of life. <laughs>